Hi and welcome to my playhouse. Uh, not long ago, a good subscriber of mine, Markers from Italy, sent me this iBoot bar. Um, and it's a unit that you mount in your rack uh, through these small ears here. Very hard to see. I am. But um, you mount that and you're able to control some power circuits here on the back. You put in, you can put in one source here and one source there, which means that you can have two power sources coming in at your data center. So you can have a mains, main power coming in here and you could have a generator coming in here and whatever there is power on will be put out through the other leads. So um, if you lose your mains, and your uh, UPS is connected over here. Uh, you might not want your UPS to be uh, connected to this all the time. So you could have it set up so that as long as there is main on it, it's not supposed to be using the UPS power over here. So there is like on the front here, there is like A, where is that? There, A and B power supply, and it shows you where it gets its power from. Also over here, there is the eight connections that you can power on and off. Um, and you can do that remotely on this unit. You have a internet connection uh, there. So you can have it on your internet and there is a web application and there is even a Windows program that you can control this with. There is also a modem connection. So you can connect this to your modem I have no idea if anyone uses that anymore. I haven't had a modem connected for years. So we're not gonna be using that. We are definitely gonna be using the internet connection here. And there is also a serial connector here, which we will actually be using because um, we, um, we don't know the password to this device. So we can't get onto it. So we have to go into this device through the serial connection here and reset it, or actually just go in and set the password for it. And also there is two connections here, that is for expanding it. You can have multiple of these devices stacked on top of each other and connect them through, well they, these are RJ11 I think connectors. And well, you can control everything from one uh, box, so yeah. This um, unit is, um, for 220, well, uh, actually it's for 110 to 120 volts AC and for 220 to 240 volt AC, um, 60 hertz and 50 hertz. It can do 16 amps for 110 and 13 amps for 240. So yeah, there is a sticker there. I don't know if any of you are interested in that but there it is so I need to connect to this serial connector here and a, another good subscriber of mine uh, sent me this device and that's a USB to serial connector like that and I just tested it it works um, I, I had a lot of trouble, um, I put it on my good Lenovo laptop here and I just stuck it in and I was waiting for it to pop up something down here and it did not. So uh, I had to go into the device manager and there I could see that something popped up and then it wanted to update the driver and then I got a COM, COM3 on, on that machine and I was able to, to use that. But then I ran into the problem that to uh, connect to this thing you need to use um, something like hypervisor. I tried of course to use uh, putty. Did not work. So um, yeah, I actually had to go and dig up an old Windows XP machine. So we'll just have a quickie at that. This is my Dell Latitude and it's a C840. 
it's a really old but really awesome laptop. It uh, has a screen resolution of 1600 times 1200 and that's way beyond what laptops had when this one was new. Uh, the normal resolution back then when I, when I was buying these was like 1024 times 768 so this was uh, way ahead of its time and it had everything here on the side it has it has two PCMCI slots here it has firewire microphone headset uh, line in line out things here um, it has infrared sensor here the hot drive is behind here, so I'm not gonna pull that. King Sing Tung lock right there. On the front, it has. I have put two batteries in it, but it has a base. It has two batteries, but both of them are quite dead. There's so. Oh! Sorry, sorry. It can have a CD ROM. It's uh, normally a floppy disk, it can have over here. That's why. The CD ROM is actually over here. Uh, slash DVD it has a screen output um, so you can connect the screen another King's internal lock and it has the modem that we never uses and it has a I do believe this is only 100 megabit uh, network but still awesome but on the back is the really important stuff and why we need it it has this serial connector Awesome, a couple of USBs, printer port, docking station port, VGA and PS2 connections, power and a redundant fan solution over here. That's the awesomeness of, um, of this computer. And with that serial connector, we can connect to this device. Oh, I better remember to say thank you very much for sending this. I couldn't find your name. You, uh, you I did read that something was coming. Please uh, send me a private note um, so that I can thank you again. Because I didn't really know if it was coming and suddenly it showed up, so thank you. So to connect this over here at the laptop, you can see there is a male connector right there. So we need the female connector to go over there. And over here there is a female connector, so we need the male connector there. Uh, that's. Well, it couldn't be any more simple than that, could it? And if you don't know how that works, well, you should have listened in school. So, um, it comes with these very big power plugs, and these are rated for 16 amps. Um, so, that's a lot. Um, actually, it says up here that it can do 15 amps if it just has one. It can do 16 amps if it has both of them. So, we're gonna put this in... Um, over here because um, that's that's a input so we'll power that like that cool when you power the device it starts by lighting up here a it's power then it turns on some switches over here and it runs through some kind of a power cycle it tests the different relays in there you can hear those clicking and there are apparently eight of those, which probably corresponds with the eight connections of the back. Awesome. Uh, the really bad thing about this laptop is really that it's in four three aspects ratios. So, um, but um, it runs Windows XP, which includes the hyper terminal. So, and that is located on the programs. Uh, accessories, communications, where did you go? You're there, and there. And it kind of just wants to know what I want to do, but I have already created a um, thing for it, and I just call it Bo. Um, that was to be funny. To communicate with this, you need to communicate with, the, with these settings. And this is 15,200 bits per second, 8 data bits, no parity, and 1 stop bit. But as you can see, there is nothing here. Um, actually, there is. So, <laughs> oh, sorry. But I don't have the password. Actually, we need to start with the name. It should be admin admin. 
and it does not approve of that. So we need to reset that. And to reset it, I have this little thing here because on the front of the box, there is a tiny little reset button that you need to poke. So we will do that. It's right here and I need to poke it for five seconds. So I'll poke it and we'll count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we should be able to log in when it clears the screen and asks, um, there it is. There, and we are in, like Flynn. So now I can go and reset the, the username uh, there should be a user number one that I can change. Okay, I just booted, but there is help here. So you can get some help. And what we need to do is we need to do something with this user. So we can help user and we get these solutions. And there is a really nice one here for set username, password, new pass and um, well, confirm that. So we will try that. Set user, and that would be for admin. Password, password, and we will give it some kind of a password. I will go with something simple that I can remember. What would that be? Awesome, awesome. Let's see if it, uh, if it bites on that one. It says okay. So, I think we can log out and probably log in with admin and awesome with capital letters. Let's see if there was an log out command there. There were nothing that will help us there. So maybe just exit. Did not work. Quit. Quit. No. Okay, we'll just reboot this thing. Okay, we are rebooted, so let's try with admin and awesome. We're in. We have changed the password, so now we can go play. And probably we could go set up some IP, probably. we That would be awesome to change the IP so that I don't have to change my computer IP. So we'll help. Need some help again. There is some network. Let's help network. There. Set IP address. That should be fairly simple. Oh, what to give it? 30. I don't think anything is using that. Mm, reboot is required. Okay. So do we need to set the subnet? We probably better do that. And the gateway. Let's see if that's good. Okay, cool. It uh, needs a reboot, so we'll do that. So with the add-on of a nice red network cable, we should be able to control this uh, from the network. Let's see if that happens. I have punched in the IP number and I have cheated. I have already been on it, so let's just check it. It uh, prompts you right away and I am now able to log in um, if I press up here where it actually types and the password is now awesome and this is quite simple it's control you can on and off these connectors out here and there are um, scale I have no idea what that is. There are the four connections here and there are four connections here. And it kind of tells you how much amperage it uses as well. That's kind of neat. We'll have to plug something in there to check that. But over here we can select all the switches. We can deselect all the switches. Select all and all these are set. Then we can deselect something. There are some names. Somebody has configured some names for these outlets. I have no idea what that is, but now we can power some of them off, like that. And down here, it shut them off. So number one, three, five, and seven is now off. 
So we can go back and we can just select all and power on. And it powers them on one at a time and there is a slight delay to not, um, probably to not stress the system too much. So cool. Let's try and plug something in and see if we can see how much power it uses. Okay, as you might be able to hear, um, I have powered up a couple of servers. And we can see right here that they are using 1.3 amps. So um, I have connected those to outlet number 2 and number 3. We could kind of power those servers off here. It's not a very nice way to do it, but well for the for the video purposes we will try and do that uh, I shouldn't have used my good servers though so but let's do it off and it became very quiet because now the servers are both turned off and they are drawing 0 0.1 amps could just refresh that and see if uh, yeah that counter is always using a little bit of power. I hope that's not how much the, the iBoot bar uses because that's that's quite a lot. So, but cool. Okay, I am just looking, I've just downloaded the Windows program for this. This one is probably the Windows application. And I just found that they have an ESET terminal. Um, and I've also gotten the firmware upgrade for this. Um, and that's a 1.5 and over here we can see that this one is running where is it there 1.20 so um, it has gotten far behind in firmware so I'll see how far I get with that just installed the Windows application here so let's try and give it an IP number uh, maybe okay we have to add one okay and then we can give it an IP okay admin and awesome awesome save user okay so now we have one over here we should probably have given it another name that's a really dumb name uh, for what I'm gonna be using it for uh, I'm guessing that we can we can probably inbolt IP address what did I put okay it sees it here Control. Oh, okay. I was just not marked, so I can set the delay here, and I can see the current coming in and out from there. So, more or less, this is probably it's, it looks about the same as I saw on the other one. I don't know if there is any more options. Doesn't look like there is a lot of options here. So. Maybe we have to go update the firmware before we can do anything more than this. So let's um, log out again. Do we have to log out? We have to log in. We don't have to log out. So I kind of got access to this. I wasn't sure that I would because, well, it has been cheating. I think this video has taken four hours. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a lot of trouble getting the connection to the serial connection to this tried three different cables, um, had to switch computers, had to try over with the cables. Actually, the first cable that I ever tried was the one that turned out to actually be working, um, which was this one, a really cheap one. You can kind of hear that, it's, it's not quality, but I will be mounting this in my data center because I think this is really neat. I want to use this for my blade center so that I can power on and off my blade center. Right now the blade center it does not have an on and off switch. It is powered with six big connectors that I have to put into the well outlet out there to power up the blade center so I can't power it up and on easily. With this thing mounted I will be able to power up and down my blade center that way. A blade center uses something like 400 to 600 watts doing absolutely nothing. So it would be awesome to be able to shut it completely off when I'm not using it. And still be able to sit far away and turn on the blade center. So that's my secret plan right now. And now it ain't secret anymore. So um, 
Thank you very much to Marcus for sending me this. Um, there's a link in the description to his YouTube channel. He does stuff in Italian, so if you speak the language, that's probably best because I don't understand a word of what he's saying. Maybe the ciao I'm okay with, but the rest, I don't speak Italian. So, well, thank you very much for watching my videos. Hope you got something out of this. Um, I will try and link this in the description as well. I'm not sure if it's soul anywhere but i'll definitely try so have a really nice day bye bye